everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's do some fun paper crafting. Stay tuned. So today we're going to make this awesome bookcase complete with three books and I'm going to show you how I am now going to be able to make projects like this in no time. Welcome to my channel. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you guys so much for the awesome way in which you support me and my channel. Like I said in the opener, we are going to make this awesome bookcase complete with three books. Super quick to make, super easy to cut out multiples. And that's the key to this video, cutting out multiples. So I'll give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So here is a closer look at today's awesome project. When finished, the bookcase will measure three and a quarter by six, and it'll be one and seven eighths inch deep. And it is designed to hold three, three and a quarter by six inch notebooks. And I did these in Christmas colors. I did them in a Christmas theme, but this is really any season, any reason, any gender. You don't have to make yours for Christmas. You can make them for any season, reason, or gender. And if you're doing a craft fair, this is going to be an awesome craft fair seller because people love items like this. And if you're doing a craft fair, I think that this would be a great little craft fair seller. I know that I personally love having little books that I can write in. So do my sisters and so do other people who know me because they love getting these little books from me. So this set is going to hold three. I've already made two. I'll make the third one with you. And we're also going to make the holder together. So you'll see how that's made as well. So here's what we're going to need to make this. So I have mounted this pedestal style. So for the little pedestal base, you're going to need a piece of chipboard that measures two and a quarter by four and a quarter. Then I have some inserts for the actual bookcase itself. We have one piece that measures one and three quarters by three and three quarters. We have one piece that measures two and seven eighths by three and three quarters. And then we have a piece that measures three and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And we have two pieces that measure one and three quarters by five and seven eighths. Then I have the piece for the book and this measures eight by six. Then I have a piece that measures seven and five eighths by 12. This is what we'll be making the body of the bookcase from. Then I have a few scrap pieces that I'll be using for embellishment as well as to cover the pedestal. And then finally, you're going to need some white paper that is cut at three and five eighths by six. And you're going to need approximately 75 sheets per book. Now I'm just using copier paper or printer paper for this. You can use other paper, the thicker your paper, then you're not going to need as many sheets in the book. But with the plain old copier paper, I am using about 75 sheets per book. And most of you know that I have an industrial manual cutter that will allow me to cut multiples of paper and chipboard. But just recently I was contacted by a company named Vivor and they wanted to know if I would be interested in testing a few of their products and bringing those products to you on the channel. And I looked through what they had to offer and there were two things that caught my eye. The first one is their electronic cutter. This video is sponsored by Vivor and I use the Vivor electronic cutter to cut out all of the paper that I needed for this, all of the paper that I needed for this, my chipboard, everything. I cut it on that cutter because I wanted to give it a thorough test and I was very pleased with how well it did. Let's go ahead and get started on the project and we'll talk a little bit more about the Vivor paper cutter as we go along. So we're going to take our piece that measures eight by six and we're going to score it at three and three quarters. We're going to rotate it to the opposite eight inch side and score at three and three quarters. And now we can fold and burnish all of our scores. So if you were thinking about doing a craft fair or if you wanted to make up multiples of these with that cutter, 
you can go ahead and cut out all of your eight by six pieces in one pass. So now I'm going to take that notebook cover and I am just going to take my glue and I'm going to spread it in the spine like this. So then I'm just going to take a couple of clips, put those clips on the end, and then I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to add some glue to the edge. Now I have put more paper on than I actually need and I'll explain that in just a minute. But I was able to cut all of this paper with my Vivor electronic paper cutter. And like I said, it's not for everyone, but if you have a need for multiple paper cutting on a regular basis, this is a nice little investment. There is a discount code in the description box for anyone who is interested. So I am going to take this, we're going to place it right in that spine. I'm going to close it and I'll make sure that I have it nice and stuck. Then I'm just going to open it and peel away one or two pages that might have glue on them. And then I'll go to the back and we're going to do the same thing. That is why I put in more pages than I was going to need because I can peel away just a few to have a nice clean inside look on my book. So now I'm just going to take this, rub it against my desk, go ahead and use my big old spatula, rub it against the desk again. And there I have my third book to go in my bookcase. And so now I'm just going to take this piece of ephemera, add some glue to the back, place it down like this on some of that scrap. Go ahead and get that nice and stuck. And then I'm just going to trim away some of the excess. And now I can take this, add my glue, and we're going to place this right there. But did you guys see how easy it was for me to make the book itself. It literally took me mere minutes because all of my pieces were cut on the Vivor electronic paper cutter. I'm going to play a very quick video that I made of the cutter so that you can see for yourself exactly what it looks like and how to work it. The cutter will not appeal to everyone, but if you are thinking about making craft fairs a business for you, or if you're thinking about turning your hobby into a business, Having an electronic cutter like this is truly a time saver. So here's a close up look at the electronic cutter by Vivor. I am going to turn on the power and you know it's on because you hear those beeps. So when I place my hand here, you can see that a light comes on. That is a safety precaution to let you know that the machine is active, your cut is here. And so you need to be careful not to have your hand come in contact with the blade. We have the red power light, which indicates that the power is on. We have a green reset button that'll come into play in just a minute. And then we have these two buttons that activate the cutting mechanism. And then here at the top, we have this little knob that you wind to raise the blade. And then here on this side, we have the paper tray. We have a wheel that will roll to pull that tray forward. And here we have a ruler. This is how you set your cut size. So to make my books, I need white paper that is cut at three and five eighths by six. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and roll this over until I get to six. Now my paper is in position. And now you can see the red laser. 
You can also see that side light light up to let me know that my hands are here and they shouldn't be. So to cut, I'm just going to turn this until that blade locks into place. I'm going to hit the reset button. And then I hold down the two cut buttons until the cut is complete. And just like that, I have these nice scrap pieces that I'll be able to use. Then I'm simply going to lift up. I'm going to turn off the machine so that I can take my paper out. I'm turning off the machine just because I want to be extra careful. These pages are now six inches high and y'all, they are as straight as can be and the ends are so smooth. So I've placed those six inch cuts I made back in the well. I have the power turned off. So I am going to just roll this down to three and five eighths. I'm going to take my handle and just bring the blade down. I'm going to turn the power back on. I take my hand and you can see that light. Let's press the reset button and hold down the two cut buttons at the same time. Turn the machine off. And we're going to raise the blade. And y'all, there are my cuts that I need for my books. I'm going to go ahead and just do the second set. Bring down the blade. Turn on the power. Press the reset button. And then press the two cut buttons at the same time. Now I'm going to turn the power off. Now I have two more stacks of paper that I'm able to use to make my books. This machine made it very easy for me to be able to cut all of these. I could have actually cut a much larger stack, but I wanted to demo this amount with you guys. I was so impressed with the straightness of how it cut, the smoothness of each particular side of that cut. I enjoyed my manual cutter but I could never get my cuts as even all the time as I was able to with that Vivor paper cutter. So we're going to go ahead and make the bookcase. So on the seven and five eighths inch side, we're going to score at one and seven eighths. Then we're going to rotate it to the opposite seven and five eighths inch side and score at one and seven eighths. Then we'll rotate it to the 12 inch side and we're going to score at one, at four, and at five and seven eighths. And now we can fold and burnish all of our scores. So now we're going to take it and we're going to release these tabs right here. So let's go up to that score mark and drag straight through the middle and we have freed this tab. Now we're going to rotate it to this side and we're going to do the same thing. Go to the score mark, cut straight through the middle to release it. And then I'm going to take this end and this end only and I'm just going to angle a little bit. Not a lot, but I just like that look that it's going to give me. So now we can take some of those inserts and put them in. So we're going to take the piece that measures one and three quarters by three and three quarters. We're going to add some glue and we're going to place that right here in the center, making sure that we don't have it on the score mark. Then I'm going to take the piece that measures three and three quarters by one and three quarters. We're going to add some glue. You can use tape for this as well. And we're going to place that down just like that. Then we're going to take the piece that is seven and a quarter by three and three quarters, place it in on the seven and a quarter inch side, 
and score at one and a quarter. Then we're going to fold and burnish. We'll add our glue to this. We're going to take this piece and we're just going to fold it over like that. And now we can get it stuck. And now we have this flap to deal with, so we're going to go ahead and just go to that score mark to release the flap. And we're going to angle and angle. So your piece is going to look like this. Let's add some glue right there. I'm going to fold that over the top, stick it. And then we're going to take our glue and we're just going to glue those flaps down. Ordinarily I would remove them, but they really don't get in the way, so we're just going to go ahead and use them. So now we can put it together. We're going to take these and fold them in like that. Then we'll bring this up, stand this up, and do a wrap around like that. So I'm just going to add some glue. To these pieces and some glue to these pieces again you can do this with tape if you want and now I can take this bring this piece up to hit those inside flaps and these will be on the outside now I'm just going to go on the inside with my big old spatula to get that stuck And there is the body of our bookcase. We're going to go ahead and take these inserts and put them on the inside like that. So I'm just going to take my glue Go on the inside, get that nice and stuck, take this piece, go ahead and take our glue, put it on the inside, and get this stuck. And y'all, all of these pieces, I did cut it out using the Vivor electronic paper cutter. And so now we have our little bookcase. We're going to go ahead and make the pedestal for the bookcase. So we're going to take that chipboard piece that measures two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're going to remove the double stick tape. I have a piece of scrap and this scrap is approximately five by six. I'm going to place that down just like that use my stylus to press against the chipboard and drive into the paper to get a nice crisp score. Then let's stand it up. Train that paper to fold. And now I can just go in and miter my edges. And now I will peel away my double stick tape. And I'm just going to fold over, fold over, bring in my tape runner, and just add some tape to make sure we have a really good stick. We're going to fold this over and fold that over. Then I'm just going to take this and just kind of tap the corners to make sure that they're not pointy or anything. So now we'll take it and we're basically going to center the box on the pedestal base. And to do that I am going to use my glue
I will eyeball to start and then I'll go back and do a little bit of finessing and finagling to get it the way that I want. So hopefully you're able to see that pedestal base and that stabilizes our bookcase even more. So now I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm just going to round the edges of my bookcase. Not something you have to do. I just like the way that it looks. So now I'm going to bring in the two books that I've already made. I've already made these two and I made the third one with you guys and you can see what a fun whimsical set we have here but you can also see what a beautiful eye-catching set we have because if you are doing a craft fair people are looking across the room. Red in particular is going to draw the eye in and a well-coordinated craft fair table will certainly have people stopping by checking you out and making purchases from you. So I'm going to take these and we're just going to stack them in our little bookcase. These books fit in here beautifully. I get a lot of requests from companies to actually show their product on my channel and I resist a lot of them. And I was going to resist this one because of the price point of the electronic cutter. But I'm showing it because there are going to be those of you who are now starting your own paper crafting businesses and you are going to be making product to sell. And for me personally, that Vivor paper cutter is going to make my crafty business and my crafty life a whole lot easier. Yes, mine was gifted to me, but had I known about that machine sooner, I probably would have bought it instead of the manual industrial cutter that I bought. The manual cutter did cost over $200, so I would have spent just a little bit more to get the ease of electronic cutting. The cutter does have a learning curve to it, so if you're interested in this cutter, please make sure that you check out the link in the description box below and make sure that you totally familiarize yourself with the electronic cutter by Vivor. Let's go ahead and add a little decorative touch to the outside of our bookcase. So I'm going to use one of my little stickers. It's going to be Santa. And I'm going to lift him up just a little bit because underneath I want to go ahead and tuck in this little sticker that says made with Christmas magic. Then I'm going to flip over to the back side and I am going to take this sticker that says hot Christmas cocoa and we're going to place it right there. And then I'm going to bring in my first bookcase because I am going to go back and make books for this case as well. But here is what I was able to make with such ease because I was able to cut out all of the components using the electronic paper cutter. My experience with the paper cutter was positive, but I will say this, it is a very large machine, so it does require some space. It is a very heavy machine and very well-made machine. I think most of the components are made of steel. There is a learning curve to it, a very quick learning curve to it. Once you get the hang of it, you're going to be addicted to cutting up pieces of this or that. I think I might have cut about 30 pieces of chipboard just because I was so addicted to playing with the machine. But there is a learning curve to it, and it will require that you have some space. And then of course the price point might not be for everyone, but for those of you who are looking to turn your crafting into a business, it might be something that you want to research because it might be something that you're interested in. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope that you have enjoyed the look at the Vivor electronic paper cutter that I demoed for you. If you have, please hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.